Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! Welp, I did it. I checked out the third movie. The third robo-vampire movie. <laughs> it's called Robo-Vampire 3 Counter-Destroyer. Or, the vampire is still alive. D yeah. Well, you know, 1989 horror world cinema. Just like the other ones. Uh, I don't know. I, I about give up, folks. <laughs> On this one. Uh, again, you can tell this is two, possibly three movies mixed together. Just, you know, they just clip the scenes and put them together and try to make a story out of it. Uh, but you know what it doesn't have for it? Well, till the last three minutes of the film, it doesn't have a Robo Warrior. So this whole movie, even though it's called Robo Vampire 3, dude just pops up in the last th three minutes. Literally, the last three minutes of the movie. I don't know if it was shot for something else and they just used it. But there's way much more than that to this movie. Um, this says it's directed by Edgar Gere, or Hire. That's bullcrap. It's still Godfrey Ho. He's just trying to throw us off with a different name. <laughs> I will say, though, um, some of the newer footage that you can tell did not come from one of these movies that he bought from somewhere else and butchered. Uh, I, I've seen worse, right? And I, I will say, too, that when RoboCop or Robo Warrior shows up in this movie, he looks just like the one in the first movie. So you remember me saying in the last episode there at the end that, yeah, the, the second movie actually came out first, but we get the backstory of the Robo Warrior in, in the first movie. No story whatsoever in the second movie. And in this one, he just pops up in the last three minutes of the movie. Um, even though the character is supposedly that plays him is in the whole thing to some degree. Um, you got, like I said, three stories. You got one story where this this lady that's an undercover cop, a private investigator. But I really think they took two movies here and did different scenes of the same actress or two actresses that look a lot alike because I mean there's sometimes I'm not even sure it's the same person but in one scene she's being a private investigator and she's going undercover and then the next scene she's like shooting people with a crossbow in a bathroom <laughs> and I, I'm just trying to go I, I don't I don't know what's happening here <laughs> and I still don't know uh this is maybe even more more convoluted than than the first one. Let's let's look at a synopsis before I lose my mind here. A screenwriter and her secretary travel to a remote island to work, but they find themselves under attack by powerful vampire zombies. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Not even close to what's going on in this movie. That's maybe 20% of the movie is this stuff we're talking about here. Um, it is interesting, though, because apparently Godfrey or Edgar, whoever directed this thing, must have sat down and watched all the Freddy Krueger movies, right? All the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff, because the story with the, 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 the screenwriter and her secretary is pretty much ripped straight out of it's like a little bit of Ghostbusters 2 then a whole lot of Nightmare on M Street 2 M Street 5 the dream child right all these elements are tied in together 
had to stretch the mind a little bit to figure that out. Um, yeah, I mean, this woman is there. They they got this a room that they're gonna stay in. They've traveled to this island, and on the wall there's this painting, right? Whose eyes move and follow them everywhere, and it's supposed to be one of the last emperors of China or something like that. Which is what she's writing. She's writing this story. Because there's going to be a movie in production. And matter of fact, we follow the director and the co-producer around, which happens to be who's going to end up being one of the Robo Warriors or the Robo Warrior or whatever. That that's how they tie it in. But this girl's writing a story, and she's being haunted by this character, and eventually she gets possessed by a ghost vampire zombie vampire that has knives for fingers hmm that sounds familiar and she ends up you know and it's all in dream state i mean there is no doubt what they're pulling from here i mean it is straight up ripping off freddy krueger uh <laughs> and she ends up uh getting in a fight with her uh secretary not knowing she's fighting her, but, you know, she ends up slashing her and stuff because deep inside she's this vampire Freddy Krueger. And uh, the picture on the wall doesn't look anything like the character that possesses her, even though it feels like it's almost kind of like a David Lopan kind of thing going on here where he has to have a real woman to come back to the real world. I mean, it, it's all these things just like, man, I... They they took these ideas from all these movies that I've grown up watching and tried to slam them together in this movie. That's 20% of the movie because this other thing with this investigating woman going around shooting people with crossbows and, you know, there's a big shootout on these boats. But I'm still not sure who the bad guys are and why they're bad guys because there's no explanation. I mean... They send hitmen to try to kill this woman, this woman, and I don't know. This one guy's like smoozing on her and trying to, you know, win her over and gives her a, there's a, 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 a bouquet of flowers comes into play somehow. I think the girl pulls him out and holds him in front of him, and the guy takes it and says, I'll take this back to my boss. And when he's driving... Uh, the flowers blow up, so she put a put a bomb in the flowers and blows his car, this guy's car, up. Why? Don't know. I have no idea. Uh, all I know is this private investigator lady's got a best friend that's a singer in a nightclub that's trying to get a job and trying to star. That's what it is. Uh, they're offering them roles in this new movie called The Last Emperor. Which is, again, what is being made here. And the producer of the movie, or the director, I'm not sure which one he is, because it's never really clear. Uh, he's out and about one day, and all of a sudden he starts seeing these vampires, zombie vampires, pop up in front of him and stuff. So he starts fighting with them, and this big, massive dude that doesn't look like a vampire or a zombie. And... Uh, then all of a sudden he snaps his finger and he turns into, if you said Robo Warrior, you're wrong. He turned into a ninja dressed in white who changed, <laughs> who changed into an Oriental guy <laughs> or an Asian guy or however you're supposed to say it nowadays. I get confused. Uh, it's definitely not the same dude, right? Uh, because the other guy's like straight up American, you know, blonde haired blue eyed kind of guy and obviously the guy in the ninja suit is not the same guy but ends up fighting the, the zombies and vampires and killing them and there you go so again why turn into robo warrior at the end when you can just be this ninja and do the same thing if you got special features when you're robo warrior how do you change into two different things right <laughs> Again, I have more questions than I have answers about this flick. But this whole series, really. Uh, I did see... What did somebody say on here? Uh, there's a quote that I thought was hilarious. 
Uh, oh, yeah. Godfrey Ho is the Asian Ed Wood. <laughs> Which totally makes sense, right? It says right here, in 1989, Hong Kong director Godfrey Ho made what might be the most confusing film of all time. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that one bit. Uh, then it talks about it being released in different names. It is indeed the third part of the Ro Robo Vampire Trilogy. Though the guy in the robot suit didn't show up to the very end of the movie. Yep, I mean, you know, this guy's saying exactly what I've said. Uh, but yeah, you, this character of Jackie, who's this P.I., private investigator, I just don't get it. I don't get it. it, it there, there's there's nothing that ties it in together. And even it gets to the end where you have the big shootout on the boat, and you're thinking, okay, does the movie just end here, and we don't worry about the girl that's changed into Freddy Krueger, and she's killed her best friend or secretary or whatever? Oh, no, it goes back to that. And matter of fact, her boyfriend, which I'm guessing is the robo dude, right? Or the white ninja or whatever he is. Because he shows up and, and the other girl's laying dead on the floor all sliced up. And I mean, you, you get all these scenes where they're out in, the, in a swimming pool and you get the Freddy glove that comes up and grabs the floaty that the girl's... I mean, it's it's all there. It's all Freddy Krueger. Uh, the hand coming up through the bed. All these things are there, man. It's just different. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, she is upset because she realizes she's the one that killed him or killed her best friend while Robo Dude is standing there with her and they're, you know, talking and stuff. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes two more vampires, which are never around in the other part of the movie where the girl's the, the private investigator. Never. You never see them. They pop up in this one and they, they end up, I don't know, hurting Robo Dude, I guess, but they end up beating up the girl who's supposedly possessed and when she lays down, it's like her stomach splits open and a little boy comes out. Now, that's when I say little boy, I mean like a 10-year-old boy pops out that is like dressed like a, one of these hopping vampires. And this priest guy that's there asked, who are you? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the child of the ghost and, and my mom who's laying right there. And the little boy ends up fighting the vampires for a minute, even though he's a vampire. I I don't know, folks. I just don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm I'm dumber for watching this movie. <laughs> oh. And then also, just another thing. When you pull it up on Tubi and you see the picture on the on the the artwork there at the beginning of it, not even in the movie. I mean, I'm not saying like the artwork of the the VHS box. I'm talking about it's supposed to be a screenshot of something that happens in the movie when you click on it, and it's this woman like getting her hand ripped off or something. Not in the movie at all. Just saying. So to even add to more confusion. I just it just blows my mind. I've never seen anything like these. Uh I mean I saw the the first one, if you want to call it the first one, back when we did the show, you know, on short bus. But I'm just at a loss. I just I mean back crap crazy was crazy, but at, at least there was a storyline. This one I'm I'm just I have no idea. No idea. There's even a scene where the producer guy is going to call the screenwriter and ask her a question, but when he calls, he ends up calling the girl that's the private investigator. Like she's the screenwriter. It's like, <laughs> what is going on here? None of it makes any sense. None of these people ever interact with each other. It's just, it's just spliced all together and called a movie. I, that's the best I can give you. Um, but I will say cinematography wise versus the other two, this one shines like a brand new penny. 
<laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's not shot near as terrible. The overdubbing is absolutely atrocious, but that's just expected. But uh, yeah, if you if you want to check this out, it's on Tubi. I think all three of them are. Um, good luck. <laughs> It's it's a it's a it's gonna have to give it a one out of five. It uh, just for trying, I guess, because I did kind of enjoy some of the, the Freddy Krueger ripoff stuff. I thought it was kind of funny. There is a bit of humor in this one too. So, but yeah, I don't know what else to tell you, folks. That's that's all I got. I can't spend any more energy on this one. <laughs> so, uh, you think you know bad movies? I don't know, man. I've seen a lot of bad stuff, and these are just, you can't even talk about them. I mean, it's just, it's so confusing. All right, folks, that's it for this one. We'll try to find something better for you next time. Adios. Dr. Goofy!